All right, I'm back. Sorry, wait to terminate the last video for whatever reason. Now, I have the residue here. Again, just terminology thing. The residue. After the drying out, the driving out of the water, there is a residue. And so I'm going to get a little of it. Of course, I'll, I'll, I, I, I kind of let it cool here so I can help do this, touch it. Put a lid on the test tube. Oh, let me put some. Right. Then, add some water. And in this case, I can mix it that way. Another way would be to put in the stir bar and do it that way, but this will suffice. So this is the part where it says uh, what happens when you take the residue, uh, dissolve it with water, so it's now aqueous, meaning it's dissolved in water, and then we ask to see what happens when we add HCl, hydrochloric acid. So when you do these things, you always want to think about what's going on, uh, namely, <laughs> here, I did that. <laughs> And don't point it towards your neighbor either, so just in case something unusual happens. And HCL here is uh, quite concentrated, quite corrosive, so you gotta be careful and then put in drop by drop. I don't make sure my hand is not messing up the view here. Whoa. All right. So, you can then record your observations with respect to this reaction. Just two more simple reactions. The next one. Asks, asks us to observe what happens when we take a ferric chloride solution or iron 3 chloride solution and see what it looks like. Hmm. That's original carbon. It's been around for a few days. And then I'm going to use the plastic pipetta that are used for, for quick deliveries when precise volumes are not essential. So that's the iron 3 chloride solution. And of course, when you do these things, make sure that you're adding the right reagent. And it says add potassium thiocyanate. In the near future, you will know the exact chemical formulas of these reagents. Again, volume that were adding not important. Again, you can then look at that and make your obvious observations. So in this case, the proper description is, this is this solution is colorless, the, whatever the color of the original iron 3 solution, and then the final color. So you gotta describe all those. One more to go. Make sure you retain things in the right location so that we don't get contamination. What's the last one? The last one asks us to consider or observe what happens when we take barium chloride. Barium chloride aqueous, solution of barium chloride in water, 
get a bit of that. How about some more? Meh. A little more than I should have added, but hey, doesn't matter in this case. Just to avoid contamination, I close this before I put it away. Put that away. And then take what? Which I'm taking the right thing sodium sulfate. Now, kind of maybe hard to see. Um, what's happening is, of course, the milky solution. Actually, if, you were, if, if I let this sit for uh, two or three hours, it'll be more obvious at that time. Uh, but uh, the net result is that you get some white particles. Right now, they are colloidal, meaning they're so small and so they don't settle down but eventually they'll form bigger and bigger particles and then you get a precipitate, quite the language, the solid phase that forms will now settle at the bottom and we we'll say we get a precipitate. I believe that is the last of the experimentation. So as you watch this, enter the relevant data I will provide uh, an Excel sheet, not that you're going to do any calculations, but you can then enter the relevant data from the video and answer the questions therein. You download it from some location, I'll let you know where, then when you're done, you upload it to the same location and then um, the teaching assistants will grade and will tell that to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.